Hey guys, Adam here. So, my video explaining the Swedish pitch accent turned out pretty popular, and I think a sequel is now long overdue. In this video, I'm going to go through the dialectal variation of the pitch accent to show you how it's actually realized across the various regions of the Swedish speaking area. I'm going to assume that you're already familiar with what the Swedish pitch accent is and how it works, and so if you aren't, I highly recommend you watch my video Understanding the Swedish Pitch Accent before continuing with this one. Alright, let's recap the relevant parts from the other video. First of all, we have two accents, accent 1 and accent 2, shown here with their respective pitch contours. Accent 1 is basically just regular intonation, with a single increase in pitch on the stressed syllable, whereas accent 2 has a double peaked pitch, where it first peaks in the stressed syllable and then once again in the unstressed one. Let's repeat a classic example. Andan, andan. Just now I used an East Central Swedish pronunciation, just like I did in the other video. And here's the thing, this recap we have in front of us is only valid for a certain dialectal area, which includes East Central Swedish. Since this is the pronunciation frequently hailed as standard, it's what I used in the other video to keep it simple for learners. But now the educational gloves are off and we're gonna look at all of it. This way you can both better understand the variation you encounter when listening to Swedes speak, and you can choose to learn the pitch accent type that is relevant to the dialect that you want to speak. Now when talking about Swedish pitch accent, we can distinguish five different types of it. These types are very imaginatively called type 0, type 1a, type 1b, type 2a, and type 2b, and here on the map you see how they're spread across the Swedish language area. Before I continue with this, I want to make two things very clear. First, I want to say that this map is approximate, and that all borders should be taken with some caution. Second, I want to underline that these groups are based on generalizations of specific traits. That means that there's considerable dialectal variation within each group, and that the grouping reflects shared features in pitch structure, and not that everyone in the various groups speaks in the same way. Anyhow, let's start with type 0. This isn't actually a type of pitch accent, but rather indicates the lack of it altogether. The most well-known area for lacking pitch accent is Finland, but pitch accent is traditionally also lacking in Estonia and in the areas of Sweden where the Finnish language has a historical presence or where historical contact with Finland has been intensive. Today, lack of pitch accent is spreading in Finland, where it is not present in a standard language and only a small area in the southwest maintains it. In Sweden, it's the opposite, and the areas historically lacking pitch accent are adopting the accent patterns from neighboring areas instead. I also want to point out that this group is actually quite heterogeneous when it comes to accent and prosody, which makes sense seeing as we've grouped them together based on the lack of something rather than a shared feature. In fact, when it comes to the accent, this southern group, which is the one I used for my generalized pitch contour here, is quite distinct from the dialects of western Finland, which instead are more reminiscent of the accents found across the waters in Sweden. Alright, and now to the parts you've all been waiting for, the areas with the pitch accent. These areas have either of the accent types 1a, 1b, 2a, and 2b, and these simple names are not coincidental. The most important difference between all accent types goes between type 1 and type 2. To illustrate this, here's the pitch contours for type 2a, which is the type you're already familiar with. Accent 1, peaking pitch, no problem. Accent 2, double peak, oh boy. This is where the difference lies, and for a learner, this type is practical because you can catch on to this double peak to more easily distinguish between the two accents. But in type 1 accents, you cannot. Because where type 2 accents have a double peak, type 1 accents have another single peak. Here's accent type 1a for comparison. As you can see, there is a single increase in pitch in both accent 1 and 2, and the only difference is the timing of them. Now, I'm not the one to say, but I can imagine this being a wee bit harder for someone trying to learn this from scratch. Anyway, let's listen to our duck spirit pair to hear the difference. Andan, 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 andan. As for the difference between type 1a and 1b, and between 2a and 2b, this is all about the timing. Relative to each other, the a type accents have their peak in pitch earlier than the b types. That's it. Here we have type 1a and 1b, and both being type 1s, they have a single peak in pitch in both accent 1 and 2. The difference between them, as you can see, 
is that the peaks in type 1a come earlier than the ones in type 1b, and that is in fact the sole distinguishing factor between them. Let's listen. Andan, andan. Andan, andan. As for type 2a and 2b, the difference is basically the same, although for accent 2, the timing mainly concerns the second peak in pitch. Let's listen. Andan, andan. Andan, andan. Okay, so now we'll have a closer look at each group at a time with more examples. I'm making a judgment call here, and we'll try to keep the same dialect for all examples, changing only the pitch accent type. This might be a bit weird for certain regions, where the dialect and accent don't usually mix like mine will here, but since my goal is to highlight the pitch accent types and compare them to each other, I hope you'll understand why I'm doing it like this. Alright, type 1a is primarily found in southern Sweden. As a type 1, it has only a single pitch peak in both accent 1 and 2, which are instead distinguished by timing. The peak in accent 1 is immediate, while in accent 2, the pitch rises into a peak on the stressed vowel. Let's listen to a few minimal pairs. Andan, andan. Buren, buren. Tomten, tomten. Given, given. Värden, värden. Type 1b is primarily found in the regions of Dalarna and Gotland. This type also has a single pitch peak in both accent 1 and 2, which are distinguished by timing. In contrast to type 1a, however, the pitch gets to rise in both accents, peaking on the stressed vowel in accent 1 and just after it in accent 2. Another minor difference is also that the pitch keeps falling after reaching the peak, whereas as you saw in type 1a, the fall is eventually leveled out. Let's listen. Andan, andan. Buren, buren. Tomten, tomten. Given. Given. Värden, värden. Type 2a is primarily found in eastern central Sweden, most of northern Sweden, as well as along the southeastern coast. This is the type you're already familiar with, as it's the one I presented in the other video. As a type 2, it has a single pitch peak in accent 1 and a double peak in accent 2. In accent 1, the pitch rises and peaks after the stressed vowel while in accent 2 it immediately peaks and then falls on the stressed vowel before peaking again on the unstressed vowel. Let's listen. Andan, andan. Buren, buren. Tomten, tomten. Given, given. Värden, värden. Finally, type 2b is primarily found in central and western Sweden, roughly corresponding to the historical region of Götaland. As another type 2, this type also has a double pitch peak in accent 2. A unique trait for this type is how in accent 1 the pitch actually falls in the stressed syllable, and then rises and peaks in the following unstressed one. In accent 2, it immediately peaks and then drops sharply on the stressed vowel, before rising again on the unstressed vowel, peaking after it. Let's have our examples. Andan, andan. Buren, buren. Tomten, tomten. Given, given. Värden, värden. Okay, so that's that. Easy peasy, right? Nah, I'm just messing with you. But in all seriousness, I shouldn't worry too much about it. Nobody masters things like this at once in any language, but to me, being aware of that something exists and how it works is the first step towards actually learning it, and this is how I suggest you look at it too. Anyway, I did say we were going to go through it all, didn't I? And that means that we aren't done yet. We still have a couple of interesting things to talk about. First of all, a historical curiosity. Here's the area for type 2a, where accent 1 and 2 are kept distinct and contrast with each other. But in this region, around Lake Mälaren and Stockholm, the traditional dialects did something funky and got rid of the pitch accent contrast altogether. But unlike the type 0 dialects, which simply ditched accent 2 and kept the more natural accent 1 on every word, these dialects did kind of the opposite. They kept accent 1 in monosyllabic words, 
and then generalize accent 2 onto everything else, which makes for a somewhat peculiar sound to everyone else. So, for example, a hundred years ago in this area, people would have said hunden, böcker, betala, and oceaner. And this was in fact a feature of the old Stockholm dialect, though it has mostly disappeared during the 20th century, and today there are only very few older people from this area who still have it. Okay, next up, compounding. In Swedish, virtually all compounds take accent 2, as in lastbil and smaksak. And in many cases, there's no difference in accentuation between a compound such as lastbil and a non-compound like vaknar. Both take accent 2 according to the patterns you've already seen. But in some varieties, compounds behave differently from regular words. This is specifically the case with type 1b and 2a, as I'm about to show you. In type 2a, stress is the key. In a non-compound, accent 2 takes its second peak in the syllable following the stressed one, as in vaknar and hestana. But with compounds, the second peak always goes on the syllable carrying the secondary stress in the second part of the compound, as in lastbil and rullgardin. And while the two words on the left have the same pitch contour, the ones on the right do not, because the word gardin does not have initial stress. Another thing that we can see in type 2a compounds is a difference between central and northern dialects. Here is the word meaning the time machine in central Swedish, tidsmaskinen. This is what you're used to, so no problem. In northern dialects, there's a slight difference because unlike the central dialects, where the peak drops sharply after peaking, in the north it's more smoothed out, which makes it somewhat less prominent acoustically, tidsmaskinen. In type 1b, there's also a difference in compounds. If there's an unstressed syllable between the syllables carrying stress, the pitch will remain high between them, as you can see in the word rullgardin. As for the other types, they don't really care about compounds. Type 0 keeps a steady falling pitch, as in rullgardin. Type 2b always puts the second peak at the end, as in rullgardin. And type 1a drops the pitch and keeps it low after the peak, as in rullgardin. But here we encounter something special, because in many South Swedish dialects, and I'm changing dialect here, the pronunciation rullgardin is actually not the most common one. Instead, many southern speakers prefer the pronunciation rullgardin with accent 1. This is because in Scania and adjacent areas, compounds do not necessarily always take accent 2 but can take either accent, partly depending on the accents of the words being put together. As a result, compounds such as veitlök, ljusblow, and cykelnyckel take accent 1, and compounds such as matsal, sommarlov, and fingervante take accent 2. Swedish speakers might be tempted to see this as an anomaly, but in fact, the present accent 2 on everything system is the new one, and only a hundred years ago, this original system, or at least traces of it, was still found in a large western area across Sweden. Today, this system is most intact in southern and western Scania, but still exists in other southern areas, as well as in some peripheral western regions. Okay, final thing, lexical variation. Something to watch out for is that words can have different accents in different dialects. Two regions stand out here, Scania and northern Sweden and please take these borders with a grain of salt. Anyway, in both of these areas, there is a higher preference for accent 1 than in the rest of Sweden. Unfortunately, I don't have any good patterns to give you here, and there is of course variation, but loanwords and personal names are especially common among such words in both areas, and in the north, it's also common for words without initial stress. Examples from Scania are cyklar, foto, keola, Linda, undan. Examples from northern Sweden are kaffe, kopia, professor, Gustav, början. But naturally, there's also variation in the more demographically central regions of Sweden. For example, 
words and names like these ones can be pronounced with either accent even in this area. Proper research on this is still lacking, but my personal observations lead me to believe that accent 1 tends to be more common to the northeast and accent 2 to the southwest, with each word showing considerable variation from the next. If you're a Swedish speaker, please feel free to write to me and tell me how you say these or other words where the accent may vary. Anyway, I'll let this suffice for this time, and thank you all for bearing with me this far. Stay tuned for more videos on Swedish pronunciation and dialectal variation. Thank you for watching.